So let us discuss the moment of inertia of a sphere today. We have already discussed the moment of inertia of a rod, which is one dimensional. We have discussed the moment of inertia of a uh, disc, which is two dimensional. We will discuss the moment of inertia of a sphere, which is three dimensional. Something like this. So what we will be discussing is moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Why is it solid? It is not hollow. That's all. It is solid because it is not hollow. Right? So we are going to discuss the moment of inertia of the sphere and the axis is like this. Like this, like this. Anyway, it doesn't make a difference because it's perfectly symmetrical. So let us go into the derivation. So we shall be starting with moment of inertia of a sphere. Solid sphere. Moment of inertia of a sphere. Okay. So let me now consider a sphere. I'm going, I'm only giving a two-dimensional representation, right? Of a three-dimensional sphere. So this sphere has uh, a radius r and a mass m. So mass per unit volume. Because it's a three-dimensional object, so we are we are not with length, we are not with area, but mass per unit volume. So m is equal to m by four by three pi r cube, which is the volume of a sphere, or you can say it is three m by four pi r cube. This is the first step. Now I'm going to consider a small area which is going to be cut out of the sphere. Okay, and this has a radius y and uh, it is at a distance x from the origin. Okay, and this we know is the radius of the sphere. So it is like this. I have cut the sphere, I have taken the sphere and I cut the sphere like this and I get a lot of disks like this. And I am taking any one such disk which has a radius of y. That is what. This is this disk and this has a radius y. And it has a thickness dx. It's a solid disk. It has a radius y and a thickness dx. So let me first write the area of this disk, this little disk. Area of the disk is going to be equal to pi r square. Here r is radius is y. So it's going to be pi y square. From this diagram, you can see y square is equal to r square minus x square from this triangle. So you can write pi r square minus x square, that is the first step. So if you have got the area, you need the volume as well, because we are talking about a three-dimensional representation. So volume of the disk is equal to pi r square minus x square into dx. This is the volume of the disk. So now mass of this tiny disk, mass of the disk is equal to this mass 3m by 4 pi r cube into pi r square minus x square into dx. Pi pi gets cancelled. So what will you get? 3m by 4 r cube r square minus x square into dx. This is the mass of the disk. What is the next step? Yes, finding out the moment of inertia. So moment of inertia of the disk is equal to mass, which is 3m by 4r cube r square minus x square into dx. Okay, now this is the sphere we have and this, this is going to be the axis. This is how it is going to go through, which means when I'm taking disks out of this, through this disk, this is going to be the axis. And we have seen, when we are taking like this, the moment of inertia is actually given by m r square by 2. I have given m, and here my r square is what? y square. My r square is y square. So I can write, instead of y square, I can straight away write r square minus x square divided by 2. Right? So this equation would now become 3m by 2. 8, 8, there's no pi, I'm sorry, 3m by 8 r cube, I have multiplied this here, r square minus x square, the whole square into dx. 
So this is for one disc. I need the moment of inertia of the entire sphere. So moment of inertia of the sphere would be equal to 3m by 8 r cube. I can leave this out since it's a constant. Integral r square minus x square the whole square into dx between limits. See, this is the center I'm taking as zero. This will be r, so this will be what? Minus r. So the limits will be minus r to r. So for convenience, I'm switching over and I'm taking the two x outside and taking this as zero to r. So I would have two into three m by eight r cube, right? Zero to r, r square minus x square. The whole square into dx. I shall go on to the next page. So I will be getting 3m by 4r cube because I had a 2 here. This 2 got cancelled with this 8, 4r cube. Okay. Then integral 0 to r, r square minus x square, the whole square into dx. Obviously, I'll let like expand the square. So I shall be writing 3m by 4r cube. r square uh, r power 4. So when I'm squaring it, I will get r power 4 minus 2 r square x square plus x power 4 into dx. So let me integrate this now. 3m by 4r cube integrating, I will get r power 4 into x minus 2 r square x cube by 3 plus x power 5 by 5 between limits 0 to r. So let me substitute r here. What will I get here? 3m by 4r cube. I will be getting r power 5 minus 2 r power 5 by 3 plus r power 5 by 5. So taking all these three, my common factor LCM is going to be 15. Am I right? So 4r cube. So my LCM is 15. I will be getting 15 r power 5 minus 10 r power 5 plus 3 r power 5. So we will be ending up with 3m by 4 r cube. So 15 minus 10 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 r power 5 by 15. So 3, this will be 15, 4, this will be 2. So I have here 2 by 5, r power 5 by r cube, or I will be ending up with 2 by 5 into, so I have a m here, I keep forgetting that. Right? So 2 by 5 m r square, which is going to be the moment of inertia of the entire sphere when the axis is taken like this. So we just have one more modification, which is called moment of inertia of sphere through a tangential axis. Okay. So now I have taken like this. Tangential axis is the axis is here, like this. Or let me say I have taken like this. When I say tangential axis, it is an axis like this, which means if this is the original axis, this is my tangential axis. It is parallel to the original axis. So what do we do? We make the modification using parallel axis theorem. So now the moment of inertia is equal to the original moment of inertia we have found out, which is 2 by 5 mr square plus mr square using parallel axis theorem. So you will have actually 5, 2 mr square plus 5 mr square, which is equal to 7 by 5 mr square, moment of inertia of a sphere through a tangential axis. We shall discuss cylinder in the next example.